Greetings, cinephiles. Are you looking for a movie analysis podcast that stands above the rest? Then look no further than Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters. We analyze good movies, we analyze bad movies, and yes, we also analyze the in-betweens of the world of cinema. So if you like what you hear, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. And yes, my friends, we are 420 friendly. So when you listen to us, smoke smoke it it if you've got got it. it. And now... Here's a new episode of Collateral Gaming. The show starts right now. I'm Ashley Chancellor. And I'm Zachary Gio. And this is Collateral Gaming Game Launch. Welcome to Collateral Gaming, the only video game podcast that matters where we focus on good games, bad games, and everything in between in the world of gaming. Uh, as you know, I am Zachary Largehead Geo, just chilling. <laughs> it's good to be back, buddy. How are you doing, Ash? Oh, I am doing great. And folks, uh, we are podcasting across the United States. Zach's in Georgia. I'm in Texas. I am as... indeed in the young Georgia. <laughs> as per usual. Out here. Uh, and yes, my friends, we are a 420 friendly podcast. Um, yeah, man, it is great to fucking be here to talk about this game that we're going to talk about, buddy. I, I know we've been looking Hell forward yeah. to this since it was announced and came out the same fucking day. Bro, can you Im- imagine <laughs> Shadow dropping a remaster of Metroid fucking Prime? Just say, oh, hey, guys, by the way, this is out now. Congrats. Go play it. Have fun. Yeah, no shit. Like, that was... <laughs> That was fucking incredible, dude. That was that was the biggest news of the Nintendo Direct. And we even got a really fucking good uh, Tears of the Kingdom trailer and a lot of other cool yeah. announcements, which I'm sure we'll bring up on the news segment. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Metroid kind of stole the show because they were like, yeah, after this Direct is over, you can go install it. 40 bucks. Um, it's just the first game. And I know a lot of people were kind of expecting the trilogy. I'm okay with it because it just means that we can buy prime 2 for uh 40 bucks hopefully here uh a little later and then metroid prime 3 <laughs> you know and uh i'm, I'm cool I'm, with I'm it glad whatever that they didn't uh, i'm sorry for cutting you off i i'm i'm glad that they released prime 1 remastered mm. instead of just porting the exact same prime trilogy to the switch like right. everybody would have gotten it and i guarantee you they would have charged us for it too it probably would have been like 60 bucks for a ported prime trilogy or something like that but I am much happier that they chose to just remaster Prime and release it. I don't know if we'll get a full remaster of 2 and 3, but maybe at least some HD, you know, some updated textures and updated, you know, cutscenes and stuff like that. Uh, but Metroid Prime Remastered, like, y'all y'all already know. I love The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Like, that is a fantastic game. Like, Zelda is my shit, but Metroid Prime is my favorite game of all time. I love that game so much. I have beaten that game probably 30 or 40 times. And when they announced Prime Remastered, Ash can tell you, I was at work watching the Direct, and I lost my shit, and I immediately started blowing up this man's phone, like, Ash, 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 Jesus Christ, Ash. (laughs) I was at work, and um, I'm not too busy at work, so, like, it's not a big deal. Um, But I was, I was, like, paying, I think I was at a meeting, Rick, right, whenever you were, um, you were texting me, and I was like, oh, shit. And I looked at my phone, and I was like, no way, and so I'm, like, trying to have this meeting and, like, hold in the news, and I'm texting Zach. (laughs) And it's like, yeah, no, because this was just fucking incredible i want it like yeah i was so it was unreal but, yeah when you texted me though i actually thought like there was it was going to be the whole fucking trilogy or something i was like what and then you were like yeah and uh, they didn't mention a price so i think it's free and i'm like no there's no way it's free <laughs> how wrong i was you know i and you know what i instantly bought that shit i put down 40 bucks i was like you better believe it i'm yeah, gonna no. buy it and then the, why uh, not the physical release is supposed to be on the 22nd i believe so yeah, uh nah. yeah i just i i went ahead and bought the game i know people are going to get the physical release because of collecting and stuff yeah but for me i really just wanted to play the game so i was happy downloading it the second i got home and just waiting so impatiently for that <laughs> shit to just finally finish installing so that i could start it up and oh my god what a beautiful job 
mm-hmm. Nintendo has done. This is not only the best remaster that Nintendo has ever created. It is the most beautiful game that Nintendo has ever launched. It is the best looking game on the Nintendo Switch, and by default, that makes it the best looking Nintendo game of all time. How quaint <laughs> that they would take a 2002 masterpiece and just completely just deck it out with the most beautiful textures, overlays. They updated some of the motion and the cutscenes. It's just fantastic. Everything yeah. about it just screams perfection. I think you're right. I mean, the, the this is the best looking game on Switch that I can think of. Oh, dude, there's nothing that even comes close. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're right. It's great, but it's it's still very cartoony, you know. And it runs in you know solid 30 FPS. You know, it runs beautifully, and it's a massive game. So I didn't expect them to take it to a full 60. But wait, I thought I mean, it did run at 60. No, Breath of the Wild is at 30. Oh, Breath of the it, Wild. Yeah. Yeah, Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime runs at sixty, and it is okay, a very okay. <laughs> smooth and sexy sixty. Okay, you're talking about you're oh talking about Zelda. Um, yeah, yeah, you know Zelda runs at thirty, but um, fucking yeah, Metroid Prime runs at sixty. That's in it, it consistently. I mean, I I think I noticed any frame drops. None. I think I I heard of one area in the game where it does slow down that somebody m- reported, but I I I never ran into that. So that's because their switch is broken. I never probably once. I never experienced a frame dip, not once. Yeah, but yeah, no, it looks beautiful. Um, it honestly, in some ways, pushes the boundaries of what a remaster does. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't quite call it a remake. I mean, it is clearly branded a remaster, and its main focus is on enhancing the visuals, but it is definitely the definitive version of the game. Uh, the number of controls that are offered, because because yeah, they, they updated the visuals, of course. Uh, they made some of the, you know, the more important... Uh, version differences from some of you know like the pal version the Wii the Wii version of the game oh, yeah. um they also implemented some new uh changes to the game like just completely new to this version uh mm-hmm. updated the controls Ooh, offered multiple control styles which we'll talk about for sure um what else um they implemented they changed a lot of small things in the game yeah. Like, obviously, there's a lot of uh, controversy over the difference in the doors in the game. Um, I <laughs> the like doors. that shit's so damn dumb, bro. Zero but out I of love... ten, literally unplayable. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> yeah, there are, there are people online that are just, like, cringing at the fact that they changed the doors. I like the change. The doors are brighter, easier to see. It looks more like a force field than it does just a door with a colorful outline. Now, granted, the door, you know, doesn't have as unique of a design, but I would trade functionality. I would trade visuals for functionality and smoothness any day of the week. Because, I mean, come on, let's let's be real. While those doors are specific in the original Prime game, sometimes they took forever to open. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, there was a meme the other day, and it was like back in my day, we had uh, we didn't have dual stick controls, spring ball, and the doors took for we forever to load while we listened to the GameCube's loud clicking, and we we were grateful. (laughs) Sure, Grandma, let's get you to bed. (laughs) Sure, Grandma, let's get you to bed. Yeah, no shit, man. But yeah, okay. In regards to the door thing, all right. Here's the thing, right? The original dev that were apparently worked on the door for months. Uh, I think Zoid was his name, Zoid uh, or something. Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Zoid, Zoid, Zoid Kirsch. Um. Anyway, I think I think that's the dude that that did it. I'll, I'll I'll verify that here as as we're talking. But um. Anyway, the thing is, is that he says that it's like he kind of posits it as like hey they fucked with the alpha levels and it's a mistake but it's clearly not a mistake because if you go look in the extra section and the the specifically the remastered like uh, concept art uh the doors are drawn that way for for the remaster concepts yeah. uh with the you know just that brighter design and and i think so i think they did what he said they changed the alpha level but it was intentional and it makes sense the doors are a lot less uh, are a lot brighter now which is good because the rest of the remaster mm-hmm. is a little darker um and okay so that. so like yeah the doors are brighter easier to see and they're more consistent with their design in like metroid prime 2 right yeah absolutely yeah and, and 100 even three well three had all kinds of doors but you know <laughs> three uh, Three is a whole different can of worms, man. 
But I mean, yeah, people that are upset about the doors obviously forget about how Prime Two looks as far as the doors are concerned, their functionality and all that stuff. It's just it's not it's not worth getting your panties in a wad over, considering the fact that the rest of the game is a fucking it's just it's it's an impressionistic painting. Nintendo really just went all I was watching a video earlier, Ash, of a side by side direct comparison of the remaster versus the original mm-hmm. bro and it is mind boggling how different it is. Oh, when yeah. I was playing the remaster for the first time I was like, yeah, this looks great. But it had been it's been a long time since I played the original Prime and so I didn't realize just how much they changed. There are a lot of it's not a remake, it's a remaster, but there are a lot of texture models uh, objects in the game, a lot of stuff that have been retexturized completely, completely redone. Like when you're first uh, starting the game and you see the vast reaches of space, and then it starts showing the space pirate frigate Orpheon, you can see that side by side comparison. Ash, actually, I'm about to send you that link right now so that you can kind of. We're doing a game launch episode. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'll it. send you this. I'm going to send you this right now because it's. Bro. bro. <laughs> It is crazy. No, oh, yeah, the game looks fucking phenomenal. Um, I was, and it was just so awesome to be able to get thrown back into the world. Um, see, I've played through most of the game on the original GameCube. I later finished it when we uh, uh, for the uh, trilogy release on the Wii. I actually, I think I finished it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It was it was a long ass time ago, but anyway. <laughs> Um, I'm sending it to you right now, brother. Now, Zach, you've played through the game like dozens of times. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let me look at this real quick. I've played I've played the original Metroid Prime probably twenty to thirty times, and I've now beaten the remaster for a third time. That's awesome. So I haven't. Yeah, you actually, guys are probably gonna think I'm fucking nuts. I haven't actually beaten the remaster yet. Uh, I think what we'll do here on this episode, we'll we'll kind of structure it like our Skyward Sword episode, and like for the first half of it, we'll we'll keep it spoiler free for anybody who hasn't. Listen, and then for the second half of it, we'll do uh, we'll cosmos. do our full spoiler take since this is a what twenty something year old game. <laughs> oh, bro, I I am honestly not worried about spoilers. If you haven't played this game, then that's your fault. I'm just kidding. <laughs> go 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 play it and experience it. It's it's forty dollars, but it is very much worth it. It is at least in if if you move through it pretty quickly, it'll take you between six and ten hours. You know, some people it's taken them twelve, other people it's taken them five. It just depends on, you know, how fast you want to move through the game. I can get through the game in like seven and a half hours, 100%. Um, but it's it's worth it. And I'll probably play it two or three more times before I take a long break. I'm yeah. just, I'm excited that it's here. I'm excited that the release of this game, if Dread didn't do a good enough job of putting Metroid on the map, this definitely did. This was kind of like the the hit that sent the ball out of the park. This was the home run. Because I, I'm wanting to hopefully believe that Nintendo is going to put as much faith and effort into Metroid as they do Mario and Zelda. Don't get me wrong. I'm really fucking pumped for May May 12th. I cannot wait for Tears of the Kingdom. I'm chomping at the bit to get started on that game. And I've been loving my PlayStation 5. Like, I've been knee-deep in a bunch of games while I'm planning a wedding. Life has been insane. But yeah. now that Metroid has kind of got a spotlight on it, I'm very happy because we waited 19 years Mm -hmm. for a continuation of the Metroid storyline. Metroid Dread was finally Metroid 5. We have been waiting almost 20 years for that continuation. I won't be surprised if we see Metroid 6 in two or three years. I will not be surprised if it comes quickly because people want it now. It's enjoyable. Whether it's 2D format or 3D format or 2.5D format or 3D format, it's something that people are enjoying. They Metroid Prime is the top seller on Amazon right now. Yeah. That 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 kills me. I was so excited to see that. I'm kind of surprised too, because retro isn't as as uh doesn't take usually as long on their releases than than Nintendo does. Uh, when like there wasn't that big of a gap between Prime One and Two and even Three, I feel like. So it's like yeah, yeah retro it, it studios wasn't bad could, at all. Th- I think that what they should definitely do very quickly, and I I would I, I seriously retro if you're not doing this, do it because everybody wants it. Pump out the Prime Two and Three remasters. You know, uh, 
whether that's before or after Prime 4. And then, yeah, like, I cannot wait to see something with Prime 4. I, I'm just, I'm so ready. It is <laughs> basically nothing to show us so far, except for that little teaser and the fact that they're working on it. Oh, and the fact that they scrapped development, but they restarted with retro. You know what? I'm fine with that. But it's been a, <laughs> it's been a couple years at least since that. So I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to hear some news about this game. Man, I'm... I'm just I'm very excited because I went from my very first Metroid was Fusion and I went from not really understanding what the series was about at all to knowing the the story from the very beginning, having read all of the manga, um, playing all the games multiple times, including other M. Yes, I understand that <laughs> that game is hot dog shit, but I have beaten it multiple times. Uh -huh. Why didn't Samus turn on her Varia suit? Why? Okay, Why? That fucks with me because it's like there's just no reason that she should not be able to have the various suit on. It's like, why was it deauthorized? Yeah, first of all, why was it deauthorized in the first place? It's not a, It's not like a weapon. It, there's no reason for it to be deauthorized, too. Why By the whole logic of the fucking game, she should have been at full power from the start. <laughs> why does uh, a fucking... Uh, well, why does... Ad Second of all, yeah, why does Adam not authorize it when he's sending her through the lava area third of all why doesn't samus just use her own fucking common sense and just be like oh hey the various suit would prevent me from taking damage in the lava area so oh. i should be able to equip it because there's no reason i shouldn't be able to equip this there's no reason oh, i hey, need to wait for this i'm to be authorized. fucking dying let me <laughs> change this real quick so that i'm not fucking dying yeah yeah. Other M is garbage, man. I why? And it, and it it's goes Team against, Ninja's fault. I blame Team Ninja. It goes against everything you've come to understand about Metroid level design because in a Metroid game, you avoid the high temperature areas until you get the, the various suit. That's the point. You're not supposed to explore those. You're supposed to walk into one of those rooms, go, oh shit, I don't have the right equipment and head out. And Metroid mm -hmm. Other M, they throw that in your face and have you actually have to take damage and run through the the very the the high temperature zone. And I don't know, it just goes against conventional logic. And I know that Prime 2 is my favorite Metroid game. And it does a similar thing, but it makes it different, so it's okay. But you go, specifically you going through about? a lava area about? in a Metroid game? No. Oh, you're talking about Dark Ether. I, I was like, what are you talking about? And then you're talking about like how you have to trek through Dark Ether. But that's different because yeah. you have to use the fact that you're constantly dying. That is a puzzle in and of itself. But as right. the, the further you progress through the game, the Dark Suit and then the Light Suit, one of the greatest suits in Metroid history... You know, and that that's fun. And I'm actually about to start another playthrough of Echoes, and I'm really excited because every I've beaten that game all the way through twice. Mm -hmm. So that shows you just how different um, my view on Echoes and Prime is. I don't dislike Echoes at all. It's just Prime Prime hits me on a different level. Yeah, so. no, I 100% I, I agree. So, yeah, going back to, circling back to Prime, by the way, because to, to, as an example, right, Metroid Other M does not do this well. Metroid Prime does. Metroid Prime, in many ways, is kind of the definitive example of that level design for me. And and I know that because I Metroid Prime was like the first Metroid game I think I ever played. And so I remember walking into Magmore Caverns for the first time and trying to 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 basically juggernaut my way through it while I'm losing health. I didn't realize that there was another item that I was supposed to get that was going to prevent this. So, you know, like imagine the shock for me, right? I'm a little kid. I'm playing Metroid Prime. But that's the beauty of it is that it's it works as a, as a first Metroid game and it also works as a continuation of the series. And... Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you kind of just approach the the level design of this game and, and you learn it and, it and it becomes ingrained in you or it did for me. And I just think that, yeah, like like specifically that section of the game and the way that Prime operates, it's it's doesn't hold your hand and tell you where to go. I mean, eventually you'll get a hint if you uh, if you wait around, but you can turn that off even uh, at least in this version. So, yeah. but most of the time it kind of just lets you explore and figure out and think, oh, hey, I remember I have an ability that will allow me to backtrack through this area now. So, again, going back to the various suit, it's like I realized that I wasn't going anywhere with that area of the game. I decided to explore the Chozo ruins more. I eventually defeat Flagra, get the various suit, and then I'm like, oh, shit, now I can go back to the lava area. 
and mm-hmm. I'm get, I get to explore Magmore Caverns, and then you get to Fendrana, and Fendrana, you, you get the boost ball, and then you think, oh, I remember seeing areas where I could use this, this half pipe thing, so you go back to Talon, you get the space jump, <laughs> then you go back to Fendrana, right? Yeah, it's just, it Prime is such a well-made game, it's such a well-oiled machine mm-hmm. that the more you move through it, the more fun it gets because you realize, oh shit, I can do this now. And so you're pumped to go back. And it just, it's, it's a puzzle that keeps unlocking itself. And then you realize, oh shit, I'm actually uncovering something here. And so the story kind of unveils itself to you. And really it's up to the player. Another thing I really love about Metroid prime is it's up to the player, how much story you want to get. Because you can either, you can just make your way through the game, or you can scan everything and yes. learn exactly what's going on. My, all right, so I, we're trying to avoid spoilers right now, aren't we? At least for the first half of this episode. I mean, we're, we're, we're almost coming up on that point, so. Oh, um, okay. Because, like, there's, there's something that I really want to talk about that it's, it's a point in the game mm-hmm. uh, that I work towards. And then I always take a picture of it. And then from that point on, I feel like the fucking Doom Slayer running through the game. Just, oh, it's so good. So we'll talk about that here in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Bring but, that up later. Make a note of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, the, the uh, I forgot what I was going to say. I'm high as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not. So uh, I can I can say random shit if you'd like. <laughs> um, but basically... No, people have been talking about Prime getting a remaster for the longest time, but I swear to God, up until the second it was announced, I strictly thought that it was just a rumor. I thought that there was no way that they were going to go back and remaster, a, I, I, at least Nintendo. I, I thought that there was absolutely no way that Nintendo was going to go back and remaster a 20-year-old game because... They released the uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars thing, but they didn't remaster those games. They just ported them, you know? And a lot of people really enjoyed that stuff. But And so when I heard that Prime might be getting a remaster, I was like, oh, that's, that's BS. There's no way that's going to happen. And then Nintendo fucking shadow drops it. Like, shadow drops it. Yeah, in no the shit, middle man. of probably what is the best Nintendo Direct that we have ever gotten. Like, I'm just going to come out and say it. I think that that is the best Nintendo Direct that we have had. And yeah. not only did it shine light on a remaster of one of the best games ever made as far as Nintendo's standards. For me, it's my favorite game of all time. But it also shined light on the new Zelda that we're getting. It put a giant spotlight on Metroid, making it even bigger of a series compared to what Dread did for it. And it just brought back that excitement for video games that I had been lacking for the longest time. I was really excited to get my PlayStation 5. God of War Ragnarok was a fantastic experience. I loved every second of it. And I was really excited to play it, but by the time I I was done with it, I was just like, okay, now I'm just kind of chilling, waiting for another game. When I finished Metroid Prime, I was excited to go back through and play it again immediately. And my excitement for the rest of the series that I know is coming soon, as well as the release of this upcoming Zelda, I'm just, I'm pumped right now. My blood is pumping. I'm so excited for the future of Nintendo. And they really just dropped the bomb in one 45-minute presentation. They brought back that excitement that I experienced as a little kid. Playing this game for the first time, everybody knows that the phase on mines are in the game. That's not a spoiler. That's yeah. an area in the game that you trap you traverse to. Plus, we're about halfway through, so I don't give a shit anymore. If you haven't played the game, stop listening right now and go <laughs> through it. Experience it. If you don't, we're gonna we're gonna get into spoiler territory now. So if yeah. you haven't played it and you wanna experience it, go online and watch a playthrough or play the game yourself. It's forty dollars. If you don't have a switch, I highly suggest you get one. If you have a PC, you can download. You can safely uh, download what's called Prime Hack and experience the entire trilogy with mouse and keyboard controls. But it's also compatible with controller. So play it however you see fit. But we're diving into spoilers. So if you listen and something gets spoiled, it's your own goddamn fault. Yeah. 
So, everybody knows that the phase on mines are in the game. That part of the game, when I was a little kid, used to scare me. Because the second you get there, you're, you immediately walk into this, this pathway that is, there's a bunch of radioactive material, which in the game is known as phase on. That's why it's the phase on mines. The space pirates are mining it for its uses as far as increasing their firepower, their ability to scavenge mine and take control because they want to dominate the galaxy. That's what the space pirates are about. Yeah. You walk into this place called the phase on mines and it's this dark, like eerie tunnel with phase on and radioactive material underneath this metal pathway that you're walking and the music changes. And it just gets eerie. It sounds mm-hmm. like the best way I can describe it is it, it's like bubbles. That's the music that it, it's, it's, it feels like you're listening to bubbles, wind chimes, bubbles, and like a creepy organ type feel. I don't know if I'm describing that accurately, but it's, it's eerie. And yeah, then you walk definitely. through the pathway, you open the door, and you just see this big open excavation site. And it's called the Phase on Mines, and the music starts. And the second you get going, there are space pirates in the room that take notice of you and you are immediately into fighting because yes. that is where they are mining phase on. I'm sorry, Ash, go ahead. No, I was going to say like you're heading right into their territory. And I mean, you had previously gone into their research base, but that was kind of more of a remote area. They don't have their strongest warriors there. Here they do. This is their direct home base on Talon for and you know you are just kind of at this point in the game you've got enough weaponry that you can just deal with all of them right like you've mm-hmm. got all the tools that you need basically at this point to uh to, to dig deep into their territory and then you get a couple more powerful items there yeah it's 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 a very intense experience um and you have to make your way all the way through the phase on mines yeah do you like the meme i just sent you you make your way <laughs> all the way through the phase on mines and you just the first time i played through it i died halfway through my first trek because it's hard oh yeah it's difficult because if you don't really have a comfortable feel for the game or you get nervous or anxious easily that 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 area in the game will take hold of you real quick i will say in this playthrough and i'm playing on the the normal setting which i believe normal is casual and veteran is normal now actually if i'm not mistaken um but i'm playing i'm playing on normal and uh I haven't died yet. I haven't had a single game over, but maybe it's probably because I actually have played through the game uh, a couple times at least. So, <laughs> yeah, I uh, I didn't die on my first playthrough on the casual one, mm-hmm. or no, normal. No, I never did casual. Yeah, I never no, died on the no- on the normal run through, but I've died once on the um on the hard playthrough because I got trapped in a room with one of those security drones and they both like pinched me in a corner and I couldn't take them out. It was, it was hyper mode now or hyper mode is hard now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But it's harder than hyper mode was like, it's actually really difficult going through the space pirate base is tough, bro. I almost died going through the space pirate base because the pirates are like much more aggressive. They take more damage and all of the turrets in the game are practically mega turrets. Like they're yeah. they they take a lot of damage. Like I think it takes a super missile and a half to destroy a mega turret. Damn. So it's like it's like seven or eight missiles before that thing breaks. It's it's tough. But um yeah, shit shit's wild. So I, I it, I'm how... glad that they upped the difficulty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Good on them. Yeah. That that's the challenge that everybody needed. 
Um, what would be cool is if they would like patch it and add like a new uh, difficulty setting, right? Like like challenge players even more. Yeah, but I don't know. Um, I I'm really excited that they made it more difficult. Um, the fight with Metroid Prime is actually really hard now too because the second phase, the second phase has always been kind of lame to me because you just gotta wait for him to open up a pool of phase on. Um, you gotta wait until. Sorry, you gotta wait until he opens up a pool of phase on. You gotta stand in it and use your hyper mode to do damage to him. So, but in this version of the game, in the hard mode, he like runs at you a lot and like bumps into you, and he stays over the pool of phase on that he generates. So it makes it difficult for you to actually get into it. So that and the fight lasts like twenty minutes. Both phases together is like twenty twenty five minutes. So it's a it's it's a pretty difficult battle, and I, I'm just happy that they made it more difficult because. Older, older players or new players that are experiencing it for the first time have the casual and normal modes to really enjoy it and get a feel for it, and the veteran players can go in and get their asses kicked by on the hard mode. It makes me really happy because they gave this game the TLC that it needed. The, yeah. uh, let's talk accessibility for a minute, Ash. Okay. Let's talk about the differences that they really brought forth. When, when they released the Metroid Prime trilogy for the Wii, it was really cool and it was innovative. It was it was a new take on Prime 1 and 2. It gave you the ability to use motion controls for aiming and the nunchuck was really cool for movement and locking on and Z and I guess we'll call it Z targeting. Um and it was really cool and innovative. With the Switch versions uh of this game, they didn't just give us the original controls for Metroid Prime. They didn't just give us the motion aiming controls from the trilogy. They gave us four different mm -hmm. controller schemes that are fully customizable you can change the buttons and make it you can make it to where it is perfectly comfortable for you the default is the og metroid prime gyro controls where the left stick moves samus and you have to actually stop to free aim and stuff like that you have dual analog controls which is basically like you're playing a call of duty game because it's getting first person shooter treatment even though I wouldn't call Metroid Prime a first-person shooter, I'd call it more like a first-person adventure. It's a first-person yes, adventure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're. It is a first-person shooter technically because technically. you are shooting things in first person, but it's more of an adventure, and you're not really focused on multiplayer combat. That's that's not the focus. Isn't the shooting? The focus is the exploration and the story. Yeah. So like, to me, Metroid has always felt like Zelda, but in space. You know, it's like the 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 it, it's it the level design is, is that of an action adventure game. It just happens to be in first person and it, yeah. hap you happen to be shooting. <laughs> yep. 100%. And also it's got platforming elements in there. So it's just, it's an all around good time. Plus platforming so, elements. Yeah. But they have the dual analog and they have the gyro controls. They have hybrid controls, which is basically dual analog with gyro motion control. And then they have just the straight up uh, motion controls for the Wii, like how how they had it on the Wii. And it's just it's so innovative because if there's a specific way that somebody likes to play, they they can make it comfortable for themselves. You can up the sensitivity. They have colorblind modes. Let's talk about Nintendo coming through with the accessibility. That's not really something Nintendo has shined a light on in their previous games, but with this game, they really went all out. They did. And I've seen a, I've seen a lot of people. I'm sorry, Ash. Go ahead. Now I have so much to talk about, man. <laughs> they, go they, ahead. They, they really did go all out with the accessibility options, but you know, kind of circling back to the controls, like you mentioned. Uh, so I played this on handheld, as I have a Switch Lite. Um, I would have loved to have played with the motion controls and tried that, but I was also really excited to, to try like the modern dual stick controls. What I found was the best combination was uh, do the dual stick controls with the gyro, and then for in handheld mode and for me it's very similar to the way that like ocarina 3d and majora 3d played um where you you would you could move with the stick but you could also uh get a little bit of that precision back with the gyro so if you if you're playing in handheld dual stick plus gyro changed my life <laughs> yeah i i didn't play this game at all in handheld i played the entire game docked i don't want to play it handheld now that i've looked at it docked and it's just it's just glorious that's fair it's it's such a glorious experience man they did a complete overhaul of the textures the game looks glorious i sent ash we're we're recording in discord and he and i are in uh, a little chat room that i put in my server and i sent him a, a okay so if you if you are near a computer or if you're listening on your phone you can go to youtube 
and there's a user called Game and Mike. And he's got an ultimate cutscene comparison, Metroid Prime Remastered versus the original. Yeah, I have that playing trilogy. right now in the it background. Is, it's wild, the difference. It is absolutely incredible how different it is. I have that playing so, while, we're, while we're recording, and I'm, I'm looking at, at these, uh, the, the differences. See, I just, uh, I'm looking at right now the uh, Meta Ridley fight. And yeah, I mean, and I just, they just played the uh, the Omega Pirate fight as well. It's just night and day. It is, it looks phenomenal. Um, mm -hmm. it, like I said, I think this is definitely the definitive version of the game. Uh, 100%. The, the best way that this game has been presented and, you know, not. We're in, you know. we're in kind of an era of, I'm going to go ahead and say this. This is a very, very, very hot and spicy take. So, <laughs> um, we're in an era right now of unoriginality. There is not very many new things happening as far as, you know, video games. We're getting a lot of remakes, ports, and remasters. That being said, when you take something as glorious as Metroid Prime, a game that came out in 2002, and you completely overhaul it 20 years later to not only reinvigorate older fans of the series that enjoyed that game, but also to enlighten and encourage newer people to play it and enjoy it, that is acceptable to me. Like, The Last of Us, I'm going to hate on The Last of Us right now. I love that game. It came out in 2013 for the PlayStation, I think for the PlayStation 3. Yeah. And then um, they overhauled it and remastered it for the PlayStation 4, which is great. But then Naughty Dog's like, you know what? Let's let's just, let's fucking do it again. Let's completely remaster it and rebuild it from the ground up and make the exact same game, just make it look a lot better and release it on PS5. And let's yeah. charge seventy dollars for it, it. It is technically a remake, but it's like they remade it and they just it, they just made it exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, they they it's like they completely ran out of ideas. Now I don't hate Naughty Dog. I I, I don't like The Last of Us Two. Uh, I don't think very many people do. Uh, I liked I, it. I mean, we and when we we talked about it actually. Yeah, we we both liked it at the time, but I guess you've kind of come back and revisited it. I haven't. Now that I have revisited the game, it's it's complete and utter dog shit. And as you just play through it again, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's just it's painful. You spend half the game playing as a person who murdered a beloved character. Yeah, I, I wish he Naughty Dog had did just to release something like else child. before they remade The Last of Us. It was just it was yeah. just very 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 early for they that. They need to make a game called The First of Us and just make it about cavemen. <laughs> um, it I would be great. What if rather they go to, with like Jack and Daxter or um you know one one of their older franchises, but or I mean, we we did get a we did get a Crash remaster so oh yeah we did I still have those actually but, but I'm just really happy that they took this game and rebuilt it and yes. re and remastered it because it needed it and oh, yeah. I I'm so happy now and let's let's just kind of touch on something else they did um. They put Game Boy games on the Switch now. Like yep. that, that, and to me is beautiful. And pretty soon we'll probably get Metroid Fusion, which launched on the exact same day as Metroid Prime, which is another one of my favorite Metroid titles. And I'm just, I'm, I'm very excited to see Nintendo taking strides and like stepping forward and making shit better. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm yeah, really happy about this. Yeah, no, I'm really actually I'm really happy to see it as well. Like you said, it was a very, very, very fun, uh, like, uh, what is it? A surprise, but a welcome one. <laughs> yeah, 100%. surprise to be sure, but a welcome one, right? The the Palpatine quote. Um, the to to hear about Metroid Prime being remastered, it's been such a, a journey for me to be able to go back and fucking uh, play through the uh, original, you know, experience again. And, you know, just everything else that they did with that direct, the uh, the Tears of the Kingdom announcement was fucking awesome. I'm really happy to see that that's on track. I'm really, really, really fucking stoked for that coming out in December. No, sorry, May. <laughs> yeah. And um, then uh, uh, they did, what, uh, Pikmin 4? That looks pretty cool. Um, they're bringing Hector to uh, Fire Emblem Engage, my boy Hector. I was happy to hear that. Yeah. Uh, um. What else? Oh, and the, like you said, the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games coming to Switch. Um. Yeah. In fact, uh, the original Fire Emblem is coming. If it isn't there already, I looked. Uh, Minish Cap is on there. Fuck yeah. 
Underrated classic. Oh, yeah, brother. You spoke my language right there. I heard the Minish <laughs> Cap, and I was like, yeah, that game is that game is great. I'm very happy that they're kind of letting us all have this nostalgic flavor. I don't like that we have to pay the, you know, $50, but it's only $50 a year. It's like it's got that Xbox Live feel to it. Um, yeah. But I, I'm happy with it, and I'm really happy with the direction that Nintendo's going in. Uh, we're getting a lot of good stuff. Which is about time. I'm kind of sad that it's happening. It's better late than never, but the Switch's lifespan is almost over. And so I, I I wish they had done this a little bit sooner, but I'm not complaining about the timing of Metroid Prime Remastered. I'm just hoping that all of this translates to whatever new console that Nintendo is getting ready to unleash, and Metroid Prime Remastered is definitely the highlight of the Nintendo Switch for me. That and, you know, Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild... Having all three of those games, Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild, and Metroid Prime Remastered on the Switch will make it worth the money that I've put into it. Now, remaster uh, uh, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. <laughs> I actually have never played that game, so um, I'm, I'm eager to do it. My dad has beaten the hell out of that game, but I never played it myself. Well, you're so. in luck because we're talking about it on the podcast uh, either next month or uh, let's see. I have the list here uh paper mario yeah yeah next month we're supposed to do paper mario so is it available on switch anywhere huh is it available on switch anywhere or am i no, gonna have to emulate it you're gonna I'm have cool. to emulate it but um i've run it I've, I've emulated it before you can run it on uh, uh dolphin or um i actually have retroarch and retroarch is great retroarch is kind of like an all-in-one um yeah Nintendo, Wait. if if you don't want us to pirate your games, release remasters of those games or port them, right? Yeah, like, or like, like, make a GameCube <laughs> emulator to go on the Switch. Well, the problem is, is they can't do a, a GameCube emulator now because then they would have to include games like Metroid Prime and now the, and then and, and, and you know the other ones, so that which they're you know may end up remastering. So now I'm, I feel like they kind of locked themselves into a corner with that one, but still, maybe somewhere down the line or maybe on the next console, for sure. Oh yeah. Um yeah, so final thoughts on Metroid Prime Remastered? I am 100% thrilled to the teeth that this is in existence. I am so thankful that they took the time to do it. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see where the series goes and I love it. It is beautiful. It is a perfected masterpiece turned into an even more perfected masterpiece. And I, I didn't think the game could get any better. And here they go, proving me wrong. What about you, brother? Dude, hell yeah. Like I said, um, this is the superior version of Metroid Prime. It includes all the important differences and more. Uh, the, the control schemes, uh, the accessibility options, everything. This is the best way that Metroid Prime has ever been presented. And I'm really excited to see if they'll do Metroid Prime 2 and 3. Like, cause Prime Two Echoes, ooh, ooh, I'm I'm gonna come if 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 they do that, I'm gonna come I'm, all over my Switch. I don't do that because then you won't be able to play it. I'm gonna use I, the come beam. I uh, <laughs> I do need them to remaster the next two games because that would be so exciting. <laughs> so, but yeah, man, I'm 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 good. So I appreciate you guys tuning in and listening. Yep. Um, you can find Collateral Gaming wherever you get your podcasts. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube. Uh, if there's somewhere we're not, let us know. Uh, we also do have a Patreon where we have exclusive full-length uh, Let's Play video game commentaries. And uh, I think that we should do Metroid Prime Remastered. As, a, as I think, Or I think you should. One of us should. Or we should do it together. I'll, I'll, I'll stream it. And we could do... And I'll, honestly, I'll Ash, with we you. Can, we yeah. can we can set it up to where I can do we can take a day and I can just do a full playthrough of the game. Do it. I'll one hundred percent it. We can do it and you can do it in, in, in under six hours. So yeah, like let's let's fucking do it. Cause if I if well, I stream that game, I'll take a full eight hours to do it. Honestly, we may even make it a Twitch event and then just chop up the bits and release those individually on the Patreon. That sounds good to me. Or something. We'll we'll see. We'll we'll we'll, we'll see what we're gonna do. Um, but yeah, no. Look forward to that because I I think that 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 that's a really good opportunity. I think that's something we should do very soon. Um, like I mentioned, we are doing Paper Mario next month. Uh, this month we are supposed to be doing Ace Attorney trilogy. So uh, the hope is is that by uh, 
this uh, the next week we go ahead and get that recorded, uh, and then part two by the end of the month, and uh, we should be on track. Uh, and I'm really excited because the Ace Attorney trilogy is just in my heart. One of my favorite game series. I grew to love it very, very quickly. And I'm not like a visual novel guy, but it, to me, it's not really a visual novel type of game. It's, 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 it's a lawyer simulator, and it's it's piecing together um, and and finding contradictions and witness testimonies, and it's a whodunit mystery, and it's fucking awesome. And the characters are amazing. And God, I cannot wait to talk about that series. Uh, we're also doing a collab with Collateral Cinema on uh, both Need for Speed this month and tying into the Ace Attorney games, uh, Takashi Miike's Ace Attorney, uh, as we are doing Collateral Cinema's Miike-versary this month. Yep. All right. Hell yeah, brother. So uh, stick around for that. Um, Maybe later this month, another uh, bonus round on uh, game recommendations or something. Something, something, but yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we're we're actually kind of draw, running and in, uh, drawing into the uh, final part of the season, I guess I should say, because oh, yeah. I mean, in next month, like I said, we're doing uh, Paper Mario, and then it's uh, it's April, and then our season finale is going to be on Breath of, or sorry, Tears of the Kingdom in May. Dude, I, I'm pumped. We've got a really heavy hitting season coming up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be a lot of fun. Dope. But thank you guys for tuning in. Um, it, it is always a lot of fun uh, getting together with Ash and talking about stuff like this. Prime remastered is a masterpiece. Um, Prime remasterpiece. Yep. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Hit us up on uh, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Let us know how you feel about uh, the latest episodes, or if there's anything you'd like to us to revisit. Uh, I think that's about it for now, huh? Oh yeah, I'm I'm good on that, man. I'm I'm excited. I get to see my fiance in a few hours. <laughs> Hell's yeah, bro. Oh, Alrighty, yeah. well, I've been Ashley Chancellor, and I am and will always be Zachary Gio. This has been Collateral Gaming. We are out. Audi five thousand. <laughs>